Hi everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Lindsay Lamb and I am on the marketing team here at Pharos. With me today is our senior support engineer, Jeff Geller, and we are delighted to be giving you a tour of our new community that has been integrated with our Pharos support ticketing system. In order to bring our customers and partners an improved experience when they interact with Pharos, earlier this year we migrated several systems to a single platform which many of you know how fun my, a migration can be. And to do several at once shows you how crazy we are. So I know you see Jeff and I on our webcams, but I wanted to mention that we have Damon Betlow online with us as well. He is our IT administrator and has been absolutely amazing with all of our migrations and ensuring we didn't miss a beat when we all began working remotely this year. He's sitting quietly on standby to help Jeff and I answer any questions you may have since he's well versed in the system and has been the one training us. If you have any questions while we go through this tour, please type them into the questions area. We were debating if we would answer them live or turn them into posts and answer them on the community. So we'll see how much time we have left at the end. So please ask away and we will answer them one way or another. So let's get started. And I'm gonna begin the tour. I am gonna turn my webcam off just to um, help with the bandwidth. Stop sharing that. Okay, so everyone should be able to see the login screen here. And first, to access all the content within the community, as well as to interact with Faro support, you need to create an account. If you don't already have a community account, you can click join the community and it will open up a new window where you can just fill out the form. And once approved by the team, you'll be granted access. And several of you may already have accounts from your previous interactions with support or on our previous community. So you can just type your email and password into the middle login area here. Or if you haven't logged in since the beginning of this year, you'll need to reset your password and you can do that by clicking forgot your password. And if you aren't sure if you have an account or not, just go ahead and fill out the form again to join and we'll take a look and let you know. So I've already logged in here and this is the homepage for the community. And we have a couple of different areas for you to explore. So first we have our feature topics and by clicking on any of these, you'll go to the collection of discussions and knowledge, knowledge base articles related to that topic. You can also click over to discussions for a high level view of all the discussions taking place across all the feature topics within the community. And then this my feed area is where you can see activity happening for areas you've been engaged in or have chosen to actively follow. So right now, I am not following anything, but we will explore how to follow something in just a little bit. So along the top navigation, those same featured topics are available in this drop-down menu. We have a link to our documentation, downloads, knowledge base articles, support contact information, and support cases. So Jeff's gonna take you through those last two pieces. So I'm just gonna concentrate on the others for the moment. So documentation, if I click into there, you'll see that we have documentation. So I'll click on the Uniprint documentation here. Sorry, my computer's going a little bit slow. There we go. Um, so here you can see we have a list of release notes, different guides, tech notes. And if I dig a little deeper into guide, I'm going to click the planning and installation guide there. And then I'll pick, um, let's go with installing Uniprint server components. So I just wanted to share that all of our documentation is HTML which makes it easily searchable throughout the community and also allows us to keep our documentation current. We moved away from uploading PDFs because they can get difficult to keep up to date, especially if anyone's downloaded it. So the downloads, 
This area contains our service packs and hotfixes. So if you click on any of these, I'll go with the Blueprint Enterprise. You'll see that you're taken to where you can see the latest release when that happened. You can download the file and also read the release notes. In this downloads area, this is also where we have our IMFP downloads and resources. So if I click into there, you'll see that this is where you can find our supported devices lists, as well as where you can download the IMFP software. In our knowledge base, when you click on that, it'll show you a high level view of top articles for the different topics. But for those of you who have interacted with our knowledge base in the past, there are actually hundreds and Jeff, maybe thousands of articles here. Um, so with so much content available, how do you navigate through it and find what you need? And I know most times when you're coming to support or the community, you have something very specific in mind that you're looking for. So in that case, I always recommend using this dynamic search up at the top. And this will search for where that term shows up in all of the discussions and those hundreds or thousands of knowledge base articles available to you. So for example, if I, hopefully I can type this, type print center, it'll begin to, and I, I just paused, I didn't hit return or anything. Um, if you pause, this list will pop up with some potential suggestions. Say I click on this first one, and it was Century Management Council and Print Center. Um, so you can see that it brought me to a discussion, um, but maybe this wasn't what I was looking for. So if I just go back up to the search, click again, I'm just gonna click the first option here um, so I can see an entire list of where Print Center shows up on the community. And this will display a list of knowledge base articles, files, um, discussions that may be helpful, um, or related cases that I may have open or closed. You can, on this first screen, it's giving me a summary of all those different things, but you can also fine tune that and only look at knowledge base articles or discussions or cases or files. What I really like about this view um, is that it doesn't just, for the discussion specifically, it doesn't just list the titles and then you have to click into each one and see if that post is what you are interested in. You can simply just scroll through each of the different threads and here you can see the post as well as the comments. So it just gives you a lot of information all on one screen and you don't really have to click around and click back and, and move all around. Um, if you are interested in looking at more knowledge base articles or discussions, at first it just shows you a couple results, but you can always click view more over on the right here to see a much longer list. I did wanna add as well related to this um, integration that we did with our support ticketing system as well as our community. Previously, all of our knowledge base articles lived on our support website and not on the community. And we had tried to duplicate that content, but you can imagine just how quickly that got out of date. And it was difficult to keep current because of the amount of knowledge base articles our support team creates and edits every week. So we're just really excited to have all of this content in one site. You don't need two separate logins. You just have the one and you have access to everything. So I'm just gonna come over here and click the products. And you'll see, if I click into Uniprint, the main topic is listed up at the top. And then underneath it, there's different subcategories. And these contain content that was tagged with a specific topic and will most likely be the popular words members are using for tags. And we are still tagging and organizing content. So if you do click on a subtopic anywhere in the community that doesn't really have much in it, it will in the near future as we continue to tag things and as all of you are going through content and posting and tagging things yourself. So for the specific topics, you can see some suggested knowledge base articles and um, articles from the downloads area. And then I can also click over and see related discussions. 
So how to post, how to ask a question. If you'd like to post a discussion, you can just click this button here, ask a question. And in the pop-up window, you can choose where you do want to post that. And then as you type your question or the subject in here, so if I just start with, where can I? Um, the system starts to provide suggestions. So it's looking at the words you're typing in and it's thinking, has someone else posted this topic? So it'll just give you some suggestions just in case someone else has already asked that question on the community. If not, you can just keep typing in your subject and then you'll wanna click this details area here where you can provide more information to help other members help you. You can add links, you can do different things to the text, you can add attachments, and then by clicking add topic is where you can add different keywords and tags to help your content get found. Then you just hit ask and you are good to go. So within our discussions, comments are called answers and they can be marked as best. The only members who can select a best answer is the person who posted the original question as well as administrators. Um, so since the ability to mark a best answer is restricted, if you'd like another member's answer, uh, if you liked their answer and found it helpful, a way to bring attention to it um, to help others or even just to bring attention um, to the admins who are selecting best answers is by upvoting it. So you can see the upvote on a comment and you can also upvote questions as well, just to bring more attention to other community members. So um, one other thing I wanted to share is if Uniprint is of specific interest to me, that's where following content comes in. So I'm just gonna go back to the main Uniprint area. And if you just simply click the follow button and then select this drop down area next to this envelope here, and then change it, your email notifications to every post. And then this will send you an email when a new discussion gets posted. But it won't overwhelm you beyond that by emailing you whenever there's an additional comment. So you'll just get an email when a new post shows up in that topic. So this is how you can follow a topic, but how do you follow a specific question or a discussion taking place? So I'm just gonna hop over to general topics here. I saw this one pop up the other day and this was posted by Mark and it says, general COVID precautions your operations are using. So I may not have an answer for him, but I'm interested in as well. So I can upvote his post if I really like it. And I can receive notifications if someone comments by clicking this arrow here and bookmarking it. So now that you're following topics and a specific discussion of interest, how do you make sure the rest of your preferences are set up correctly? So by clicking your name in the upper right hand corner, I'll just take you through a couple of these areas. So if you click on my profile, this is where you can just enter basic information about yourself and it's completely up to you how much you wanna include if you wanna include anything. And along the bottom is where you can see now the feed for things that you're following, content you've bookmark, bookmarked, um, private groups you may belong to, and then cases you have with support, which Jeff is gonna take you through more of that in a, in a second. So now if I click up there again and go to my settings, under your settings, you can change your time zone and you can specify which um, areas of your profile you want to have publicly searchable. You can um, also choose if you just want it visible to members or you can completely restrict it and no one but you can see it. And if you continue to scroll down, this is where you can fine tune your email notifications even more. So you can turn them completely on or off or you can pick and choose what you wanna receive emails for. So. I like to have everything turned on, but this is definitely where you can come in and choose exactly 
what you want to get emails emails about. So with that, um, I am going to hand it over to Jeff to cover the additional areas that I mentioned about contacting support and cases. So Jeff, I'll make you, oop, just made yourself, did you just make yourself presenter? I did not. Okay. There we go. And there we go. So welcome everybody. As you got a little tour of it, you found the ways to look for information, um, the topics of documentation, products, uh, knowledge base, and so forth. I'm already logged into the community. Um, so I first wanna start with once you've, uh, once you've obtained your login and you're now logged in, uh, and you want to reach out to the technical support team. You want to open a support case with us. Something's not right. Or you have uh, questions. So on the main homepage over here, you'll find this big button that says contact technical support team. Um, or there's a link up top to contact support. So we'll click on the button. And it's going to take you to a form page. This form page has um, a number of things that you can use to input. At the bottom of this form page, you'll also see our SLA expectation, response expectations. So here's our hours of operations for uh, those, and here are our service level response expectations. The first thing to do when you want to input a support case is you're going to want to choose a product hierarchy. Um, and in this case, I'm going to create one for us today. And I'm going to choose, we have most of our product hierarchies in here. So if you don't know what the, if you know what the main product is, so we'll say we'll choose uh, Uniprint Suite. Um, from the next drop down, if you know the specific area or component of the product you want to choose, that's always helpful for us too. This is install packages. Um, then you're going to want to enter the end user customer. This is going to be your site code. I currently, and you can use this by just starting to type, you notice it populates with um, the organization I'm part of, uh, Betlow University. So I'm gonna start typing what my name is, but if you're a university or you'll see, you should see other options perhaps. Um, so I'll choose my university, my site code. Hmm, I don't know what that is. If you don't know what your site code is, we'll take you through that in a second. I know my site code is for 2 And what's the priority of this? Um, is it a no client impact? That means that nobody is able, uh, that means that people are able to print and things are working fine. You just have a, maybe a small hiccup you wanna ask a question about or begin an investigation to something. Minor client impact. Um, and these are listed down here below as priority one, two, three, and four. So minor client impact is some people aren't printing, it works for some, not for others, or there's some intermittent thing going on. Major client impact, um, well, that's quite a higher level. That means that a lot of things aren't working um, for some reason. And the last one is the site down. This means nothing is working and everything has uh, gone down the tubes for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna mark mine as minor. Uh, I'm gonna put in a subject. This helps us adequately define what it is you're having a problem with. Um, and it's very helpful for us um, to get a subject that's somewhat descriptive. So I'm gonna say I'm trying to create a package and get an error one, two, three, five, six, four, whatever. Great, now I'm gonna put in the description. This is where you can elaborate. It also has a little box down here. If you figure, if you type too much, you can always click the arrow and make the box bigger and scroll and continue to see what you type as you type it. Um, so the more to the description is, um, the more information you provide to support as with any support system, details, data, description, information, times of events, things that have happened. Um, all of that good stuff is great meat and potatoes to help us help you um, right out the gate. Less information, it's a little bit more of a challenge and we'll have to get back to you as always and um, begin some investigative questions and conversations. So I'm just gonna type in for the shortness of today. Uh, my description is pretty small. 
Next up, there's a little icon. Say you have a file you want to add to the case. Um, you've got a, a, a sample, a log file, or some item. You can simply click the little paperclip icon. You'll be presented with a box. Um, you'll have a box that allows you to select files. So if you've uploaded things in the past, you'll see they'll show up here for your account. Um, if you want to upload a new one, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to go to my desktop and I have a log file here that I want to upload. It'll say done and you click the done button. Now this file will be sent over with the support case as well. Um, so now that I've completed all of the good information that's necessary, I will click the submit button. And the green bar says my case was created. What happens when this happens is uh, support gets notified. Um, we get notifications, things show up in our system. We see that new cases are created. We can then go look at the information that was provided. You'll get a message here that says your case was created and it'll have a little bit of a summary here and you'll have this case number. So before I click on that case number, um, there's a cases tab over here where you can click on to see all of your cases. But say I created this case and you know what, I forgot something. Well, let's click on our case number. This takes you right away to the cases section and it opens up the case for you. So here you can see there's no one assigned to it at the moment. Um, it shows you the account information and the stuff that you had initially posted. So if I go back to the cases tab, now this is the second tab. Once you've contacted support, you can see your cases. So anybody else that's part of Betlow University that works with me will be able to see the other cases by Betlow University too. So for example, if tomorrow I'm on vacation for a week and I need my coworker to help, my coworker can come in and they're part of the same organization, Betlow University, and they'll be able to open up the cases as well. And they can reply back or ask for information or so forth. So you can, you can collaborate on your cases within your organization. There's a couple of items. There's things like filter, which you don't uh, need to change. And there's no real controls that you can do. But I can choose from my open cases. I can see my all cases, which is everything that's open and closed. I can see just my closed cases. And there's a couple that are closed. And I can look at recently viewed cases. These are ones I just looked at recently. So I'm going to go back to open cases. For example, if you wanted to find information on a case that you did some time ago, you can use closed cases and you can come and see which ones you have that are closed. And maybe there was some information in there that you forgot. We sent you a, a, a link or a document or sent you some type of steps to do to perform an action and you just forgot where it was located. You can go to closed cases, click on your closed case click on the communications tab and you'll find that information here from what you did before. So that's very helpful too. So we'll go back to cases. In my open cases, this is the one that I just created and I forgot to add something. I wanted to add a file. So I'm gonna add a file by clicking the upload files button and I'm gonna add this file. It's the same one, but, and I'll click done. And that's it. We'll get a notification that there was an update to the case and we can go look again. On the communications, I forgot to add a comment that I wanted to. So I will click, there's a box here right at the top that has a comment button. And it also has DTU, so you can go to communications and I'm gonna add another comment. I forgot to tell you to, I forgot to say hello. And then I'll click the comment button. Now my comment is added. And I will also, we in support will also be notified of that comment. If you wanted to print this out, I believe you can use the printable view and you can print this out. And if you wanted to print it to a PDF, you can do that as well. So back to my cases. The file section again shows you all of the attachments. Say you uploaded the wrong one. I'm gonna delete that one because it was the wrong one. And if I click on the view all button, it's a little bit of a management 
uh, view of all of the files that you have. Not a whole lot different than when you're looking at your case. And back to our main cases. And as Lindsay pointed out, there's notifications um, that you can change. So when you're in the documentation and the downloads, you can follow things. Um, so I'll go to another case. I'll go back to communications. And you can scroll through and you can read the, the communication history that has gone on. And I think that's it, Lindsay, for how to go through, how to see your different cases, the different view options that you have, how to click one, how to read what they have, the communications pathway, this is the activity, and any files that were signed. And here, once someone in support has assigned themselves, you'll see, um, you'll see this person is now the case owner. And the case owner in this case is going to be the support engineer that you're working with. As well, one last item, there is a follow button. So if I want to get email notifications again for things that happen, I can follow this case. And that's all. So thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Lindsay. So we have had um, just a couple questions come in, and one um, was about if you can go back and see historical or archive cases, um, which they then said that you did cover that. So thank you. Um, and then Damon did also um, just add to that and just said that, yes, we imported the cases from our old incident management system, so you can see them in the, the closed cases view. Um, another question that that came in that's really great is where is the documentation located for the IMFPs? And um, so I just wanted to, actually Jeff, since you're still showing your screen, mm -hmm. do you mind just typing in um, Xerox IMFP into the, the top search there? You can just hit return. Okay, so I just wanted to um, to share that I did notice um, based on that that question when people are clicking into documentation, the IMFP documentation is not listed there. So that is really great feedback um, because we will have to to add it there. So we are looking for your input and and feedback when you are looking for something and can't find it. Um, but Jeff, if you just for now, if you go um, if you search for it in the search. And just hit return again. Um, so this is again searching the whole community for, um, in this case, Xerox IMFP. So if you do scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see there under files that it lists the installation and configuration guide, a quick start and troubleshooting guide. Um, those are PDFs right now. So we do have the IMFP documentation sprinkled in there in its PDF form. So there is a little bit more work that needs to happen around the IMFPs. But I did want to just answer that question to share that if you are looking for that for now, just type that into the search. And in this type of view, you can find those files, knowledge base articles, and, and related discussions. Ah, the next question, where do you find the site codes? Yep, I mentioned that when you fill out your support case. Um, site code, so we'll go, there's Uniprint Suite locating the version in site code, and there's locating the product version in site code for Ferro's Blueprint Enterprise. Um, I'll click on the top one, and it'll take you to the frequently asked question, the knowledge base article that tells you how to um, find the Uniprint Suite. Now, you're going to be using this very top one here. And you would open the Ferros Administrator on the left-hand side, the system tree, license limits, expand, and click on that. And there's a license summary. And inside of that summary, there is a, a site code and a license expiry date. And if it was for the other product, because Beacon doesn't have a site code, um, this will walk you through. Um, and this is a good one because I'll have to go do some fixing. 
uh, we don't have the little screenshot here. Um, so I'll make sure that I go back and update. But it walks you through, launch the Blueprint Administrator, go to the Help About menu, and there's your version. Open the Blueprint Administrator, and on the dashboard section at the top, there's a license item, and there's a value there for your customer code, it's called, which is the site code. Perfect. I don't see any other questions listed here. So I'm thinking we can give people time back on their calendars. Um, I did just want to share that if additional questions come up, a lot of this is, you know, learning for the community and it's helping us build training and how-to guides for it. So if a question comes to mind on how to use the community or where to find something, create your account or log in and in the general area, post it, we'll answer it, and then it will be there for everybody else to benefit from. And we have gotten feedback from a few members already that they're able to find information a lot easier with everything integrated now. So that's been really great to hear and was an outcome we were really hoping all of you would experience with this change. And we're still tagging and organizing articles. So if you do click on a tag and nothing shows up or you can't find information you're looking for, um, we have a team that watches feedback coming in and meets weekly to go over what's being shared. And I'm actually going to include that email address um, in the chat here. It's community at um, So we get together weekly. We watch that feedback. And we just encourage you to share that with us along with your experience because it's extremely important that you have a positive experience when you interact with us in person or on sites like our community. Um, so we will um, post questions and answers, and I will also post the recording to this tour on the community. Um, so with that, I'm just going to check. Nope, no more questions have come in. Um, so thank you, Jeff, for joining me um, to welcome. give this tour to everyone today. And we wish everyone a lovely day and look forward to seeing you on the community and at future events. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.